Hi, I'm Stefan Papadakis with Papadakis Racing. We're here at our race shop in Carson, California, where we're taking this 2020 Toyota Supra and turning it into our new Formula Drift competition car. We've only got three months before the first event of the Formula Drift season, so the pressure's really on to get the car finished because that event is happening with or without us. We've already made 1,000 horsepower with the factory engine, and I'll link to the videos in the description down below where we actually profile the whole build of that engine. But for now, let's get started on the teardown. We want to get the entire car stripped all the way to the bare metal. We do that to learn about how they've designed the car and how we may improve on it for our competition spec. And then we also want to start with just a bare canvas. So as we're pulling the whole car apart, we've got a couple of piles we're going to make. We're going to make a pile of parts that we're going to continue to use, the ones that we may use, and another set of parts that we for sure are not going to use. All of the cooling system on this car is up front. We're actually going to rearrange it and put the radiator probably in the rear of the car. We're not going to use this factory transmission for the build. We're actually going to use a four-speed dog box, a full racing transmission that we'll get to in a future episode. Once we're done with getting all of the powertrain out of the car, we parked the car in its spot that is going to sit for the next few weeks. We got it up really high with these tall jack stands. They're a little bit taller than normal jack stands. That way we can get it under it as well. Believe it or not, most of the time that we spent on stripping the car down is all of the small interior pieces. All of the little airbags and all of these interesting little plugs, we don't really have instructions on how to take it apart. So a lot of the time, we're actually just taking pliers or screwdrivers or whatever and just prying them off because we know that we're not going to reuse it. And I know it's a little sad to see all of these brand new components being like cut and ruined and, and thrown away. But at the end of the day, we just build competition cars. For the sake of efficiency, we just need to get these things out of there. So we won't use the factory steering wheel. We're going to set that aside, but we may use the steering column. From the steering column and the steering shaft, it goes down into the rack and pinion. And factory, this car uses an electric rack and pinion. So there's no hydraulic and all the assist comes from electric power. We will reuse the dash, but we're not going to use the big aluminum brace underneath it. We're actually not going to install the heating and air conditioning back into the car. In these competition cars, we just want to keep what is going to make the car faster and more competitive around the track. And sometimes the driver will have to deal with a little bit hotter cabin for the sake of performance. So sorry, Freddie, it's going to be pretty hot in the car when you're running it. Now that we've got the dash off, you can see underneath and all the magic that happens for your air conditioning, the heater, and all the creature comforts in a car. Those are all tucked under the dash and a lot of the time really hard to get to. We realized it would take hours to get everything out like perfectly, but we're not reusing any of these systems. So we thought it'd be more efficient. Let's just cut some of the stock harnesses and the stuff that we know we're not going to use. And then we set that stuff aside and save time on the teardown. The car had to have at least 40 pounds of wiring in it. And we're going to build our own competition wiring harness for the car with only the wires we need. The door is relatively straightforward to pull off. All of the wiring was just one plug. Once we pulled a couple of screws out for the hinge, we were able to just lift the door up with a couple of us and pull the whole door off. So the front windshield on almost every car is actually glued in with a special urethane and it takes some special tools to remove it without breaking the glass. So we had a windshield pro come in and he's got this really interesting tool. So he feeds a cable between the windshield and the chassis pushing through the urethane. He attaches one side of the cable to a suction cup outside the windshield and then the other side of the cable goes on like a fishing reel looking thing that he powers with his electric drill and then starts pulling the cable which goes around the whole windshield cutting the urethane and making the windshield pop off without breaking anything. The windshield is one of those parts that we do want to reuse. We are allowed to use Lexan, but we feel that the driver has better visibility through the glass than through Lexan. Before we pulled all the brakes off, we drained all of the fluid. And the way we got all the brake fluid out is this tool that uses vacuum to pull and suck all of the brake fluid out of the system. That way when we go to pull the lines off, the fluid isn't dripping everywhere and making a big mess. The way the brakes work on most of these cars is when you push on the brake pedal, it puts pressure on the fluid system through this master cylinder. Fluid from those lines go through the ABS, the anti-lock braking system, which is this box. And then you can see where there's four lines that come out of the top of it. Each one of those is for one of the four wheels. We're actually not going to use any of the anti-lock braking. We want the driver to be able to lock up the brakes when he wants. We're going to replace a lot of these body components with a wider carbon fiber piece. What's quite unique on the Supra is that the fender is like super small because the hood is actually half of the fender. We noticed right away how lightweight a lot of the components are and how much aluminum they used everywhere in order to keep the weight down. And that's one of the things that makes a real sports car is having all these lightweight components and that adds to the performance. And that actually helps us because we want a lightweight car because the lighter the car, the better the power to weight ratio. And actually the lighter weight car helps fuel economy as well. So you gain in almost every category. 
So we're going to change out the shocks and the struts for a competition set when we finally do the assembly. But we want to use some of the factory components for mock-up. So this is an old school trick to get the spring off of the strut assembly while it's still compressed without a spring tool. Don't try this at home. But what I do is I take an impact, set it against a fence, and then unscrew the top nut. And you let the spring sort of shoot the strut across the, I guess, the patio here. But seriously, don't try this at home. The whole front subframe, which is where the front suspension bolts to, and actually the engine bolts to as well, is all aluminum. Not only is it lightweight, but we can fabricate and change it as needed for our competition spec, because uh, we can weld directly onto this aluminum crossmember. These assemblies are the full rear suspension, including the axles and the brakes. We felt it was more efficient to just unbolt those as complete units from the vehicle instead of all of their individual parts. And then when we go to modify that part of the car, then we can disassemble it at that point and really spend time analyzing all the rear suspension. But for now, we're just trying to get the whole car apart. This is the rear cross member where all the rear suspension bolts up to. We're gonna reuse this, but it'll be modified for our purpose. So this is the rear end, sometimes called the differential. And it's what takes the power from the engine and turns it 90 degrees to go out to both of the rear wheels. This one's active and electronic, so the computer can actually control how much slip there is between the left and the right wheels. The housing for the rear end is made out of steel, but the rear cover is made out of aluminum. And if you look at the bottom, you can see where the cooling fins are located. This is the rear trunk or the hatch, or sometimes called the deck lid of the car. We just unbolted that, removed the wiring, and set that aside. And again, here you can see another aluminum component. This is the rear crash support, and you can see the way that Sean removes it, how lightweight it is. So now that we have all the parts removed from the chassis, we need to get the car down to the chemical bath, the place that strips all of the undercoating and paint and everything off of it. That's always a bit of a challenge because there's no more wheels in the car. So we found the best way has been to use a forklift and we've got these extended forks to get under the car. We wanted to keep the project pretty secret, but we figured the car was stripped down so much that people wouldn't know what it was driving down the freeway on the trailer. In order to get all of the paint and undercoating off of the chassis, they put it in this big chemical bath for a few days. They then pull it out, they'll use pressure washers and even some hand scrapers to get all of the small bits off. And it'll do this process a couple of times before they can get everything down to the bare metal. Again, that way we can weld to the chassis and remove all the extra weight for the undercoating that we're not gonna use. This was one of those moments where you realize, oh my God, we've just taken a brand new car, stripped it down to like the bare metal, and we have to build so much up again to turn it back into a usable car. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. In the next videos, we're gonna show all the changes we're making to the car, the full assembly of the car, and then the first track day with it. So if you wanna see those and be notified, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.